Houston, we have a problem. So this is my Nissan Aria you see behind me. And this morning, I was gonna head out for a walk. I had the dog in the back of the car, it was all ready to go. Press the button uh, to start the car and I got this error warning which isn't good, and the car would not go into drive, wouldn't go into reverse, nothing. And um, the hatch actually was open here, uh, and it wouldn't close with the automatic kind of buttons that are underneath, so I shut it manually. And then, of course, it wouldn't open, and my dog was in the car. So we then had, like, you see here, look, there's a bit of a gap here, but it's not a very wide gap. And um, so we managed to kind of, my wife, who's a bit smaller than me, managed to sort of shuffle into the car, pull the seats down and we managed to get her out and she managed to hand the dog to me. Luckily, she's not a St Bernard. That's a dog, not my wife. Uh, you see here, I have the, uh, the handbook and I have it open on the page with all the warning lights because actually I, a warning light came up and looking in here, that was the brake system warning light. So that's a new one. So that's good, isn't it? <laughs> oh now, actually, I have had a few other issues. I say a few. I had about, what, nine months with this car. Fine, nothing wrong, everything lovely. And then it, uh, the lane assist started giving me a warning message uh, saying it wasn't working, so that wasn't good. And then I've had only on two occasions, one for me, one for my wife, where the reversing camera has been a bit glitchy. So that's not very good. Uh, so I've reported both of these to Nissan. And as, oh, it's not really luck, but as it, as, as it turns out, the uh, Nissan Aria has had a recall. And the recall is for some short circuit or something. And I believe they're gonna uh, do a software update, which I sounds a bit weird to me. To me, and I'm, you know, this might be completely wrong but i think if it's a short circuit they should fix a short circuit and not update the software so that it doesn't tell you there's a short circuit so you know what do i know and um anyway so it's going in for this uh, for this recall and um i keep having to ring them up and add things can you look at this while it's in can you look at that so i'm now going to have to ring them for an additional thing which is my car won't go so anyway um i'm now going to see whether it will go Right, so I'm gonna push the button on there, see if it'll start. Sounds promising. Okay, so I've had no error come up. Everything's sort of normal, and you've got the little, you know, message that really irritates everybody on that screen over there. So that's okay. So if I put my foot on the brake, which I've done, you can see the little warning thing. If I take that off, see it says, put your foot on the brake, put your foot on the brake. So it's detected that. I'll push the button again, and that then actually turns the car out, so it says it's ready. It's made all of the right noises, and it's started up. So it now is not aware of a headlight fault or whatever it was. It's now happy. I have to be honest and say this doesn't fill me with confidence, you know, because now, particularly my wife actually, because she really doesn't like things like this going wrong. If you go out, you're going to get back in the car and think, am I going to be able to get home? It was all right happening here at home because, because I could just go out. For, we were going to drive along the coast and, and have a nice Sunday walk. Um, but instead, we had to walk from home. And luckily, I do live right on the coast. So it's kind of not, although we did sort of go around the roads a little bit because it's quite blowy today. So, you know, so that's okay. That's all right. We had a bit of exploring around some roads that we just kind of don't normally go down. So, which I do on runs, incidentally. It was quite good to do that. And you go, could be quite nosy and sort of like we'll go down roads that you don't normally look at so we did that this morning for our dog walk uh but it doesn't fill me with confidence so anyway i will phone nissan tomorrow Say command go away find the name was not recognized please say a poi category name or say the address in the united kingdom starting with the street name yeah. go back say a command Cancelling voice recognition. It's because I said the N-word. So N-I, as you say that, that I'm not allowed to say that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, the voice recognition obviously works as well. The other thing that I have done, <laughs> when you buy uh, a new, any new car, really, you get free breakdown cover. And the, the Nissan is no exception. 
and uh, I hadn't really made a note of the breakdown number. Funnily enough, I've put it in my phone. So it's kind of behaving normally now, but it's one of those things where you think, is it suddenly gonna not? Funnily enough, I went out for a drive yesterday and as I was driving along, as I came up to cars, and I wasn't coming up, you know, I'm not an aggressive driver in any way. I was just sort of like cruising up behind somebody in a traffic jam or something. And as I was getting close to them, it made the sort of bit of lip noise, which is not the noise that the uh, collision mitigation system, whatever it's called, makes. It wasn't that noise, because that's a much louder noise. This is the noise that it makes if you try and lock the car and you've left the door slightly open. The door's you know, not shut properly, and as you're walking away, if you press the button, it goes Bidilip. It was that noise, which is weird to hear when you're driving along. So I kind of knew yesterday that there was something a bit weird. And because I've had this lane assist thing go wrong, and I've had the glitch on the camera, I'm just it's starting to drain my confidence in the Aria as a vehicle. So I'm, I'm hoping that my faith can be restored when it goes in, and I just hope it's some things that they can sort out quickly. Of course, it's under warranty, so I'm not gonna have to pay for any of it, but there is the inconvenience factor, let's be honest, and no one likes the inconvenience, and I don't live that close to the dealer, so it's a 40 minute drive, 45 minutes to get there and get back. So, I mean, there's an hour and a half gone, plus the time to kind of check in, pick up the courtesy car, whatever. And, uh, you know, so that's gonna be a couple of hours out of my day. And when you work for yourself, time is money, really. So, you know, that's not good. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit unhappy now. I'm a bit of an unhappy car owner. Say something to cheer me up. It's 24 hours later, just over. I have to go to a meeting. And unsurprisingly, I've brought my coat with me. I guess I have to walk home again. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be a, a voyage of discovery. I'll uh, just open the gate, get in the car, and then I'll tell you what's been happening. Okay, so I'm in the car, and uh, when I had the issue yesterday, my wife and I went out for the walk, and we're having to put the seatbelt on, optimistically. No, I won't. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit nervous, can you tell? So. I've come out to the car now, 24 hours later, I have reported it to Nissan. Now, it's going in for a recall next week, and I've also got a little snag list of things that they're gonna be looking at. Uh, I've posted it to forums, and some people have suggested it could be the 12 volt battery. And I have been doing a lot of short journeys, so that's not out of the realms of possibility, let's be honest. But what I'm gonna do now is to start the car, and I've got to go out because I've gotta go and see a customer. So there's, there's no question I've got to go out for this meeting. And, you know, life goes on. I, when I reported it to Nissan, they've added it to the list. Uh, I also, they said to me, I said, what do I do if the car breaks there? They said, well, phone the RAC. That's okay, thanks. It does come with full RAC cover, so, th so that's good. And if the dealership can't give me a courtesy car, they're giving me one when I take the car in for the recall, that's all booked. Uh, but I did phone the main Nissan UK and because the dealer said, if the car goes for a breakdown, say, tow the car, I have a problem and the car won't start and it has to be towed to the dealer. Uh, they can't give me a courtesy car because they've only got a limited number, so that's fair enough. So I phoned Nissan UK and said, well, what's the deal if my car is bricked? And they said, well, yeah, RAC can take it to Nissan. Even if it's late at night, they can get it to the Nissan dealership and Nissan will arrange a, a hire car through Enterprise, which of course I don't have to pay for. So that's good. So it takes a couple of hours to set it up. So that's okay, that gives me a little bit of, of confidence. Yes, the hassle factor, but it makes me think, well, okay, if the worst comes to the worst, you know, they've kind of got my back. But I, I yeah, I am a bit nervous about this now. <laughs> I mean, you would be, wouldn't you? This could be a very expensive paperweight. As I said to my wife this morning, she didn't know what the hell are you talking about? Right, uh, okay, I can't put it off any longer. I've got to turn the car on. Right, so, foot on the brake. And turn the car on. Well, it sounds promising. It's not giving me any horrible messages. Okay, my uh, car plays come on, that's good. So now this didn't work yesterday. I'm now gonna put it into drive. Oh, beep, 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 okay. 
and turn e-pedal on. That's worked as well. Let's just put the put the mirrors in because uh, I, you know, it's very narrow to get out of my out of my. Oh, the car's moving. It's a novelty. So uh, okay, right. So we are actually moving forwards. Let's crack open the champagne. Okay, so I'm driving along. So that's good. That's a real advantage. And I'm on my way to the to, to my meeting. And one of the things that I found, I was going through the settings on the on the car yesterday just to try and see what the hell was happening. And I found some settings that I should probably have known were there. And one of them, for example, I tried this. When I had not long had the car, we met a friend to go for a dog walk. And uh, I knew that the car was supposed to lock itself when you walk away from it. And I walked down the road and I thought, it hasn't locked, it hasn't locked. No, it hasn't locked. So I ran back to the car and sure enough, it wasn't locked. And I now know why, because uh, in the settings, the automatic lock when you walk away was switched off. I also discovered, you might have noticed when I showed the shot of the dashboard, that I can put the time on in the, on, on the display here. There's various other things. It's quite good, isn't it, looking at the settings? And you can turn things on and off. So, and also, e-pedal, uh, I always get in the car, I turn e-pedal on. I get in the car, I turn e-pedal on. I'm always doing that. And evidently, and I didn't know this either, there is a setting where you can set it to remember that. It remembers most settings automatically without you having to do anything. It remembers all the different modes. But I've actually discovered now that you can get it to remember e-pedal. You really should read the manual. RTFM. Okay, so I have arrived at my destination and I am now, uh, hang on, I'm in drive. I put the car in park and I'm now going to turn it off. Okay, I've turned the car off. Look at that, look, my best uh, eco drive, 6.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Look at that. I have to be honest, that was my wife, did 6.4. She, she doesn't she doesn't try, she doesn't use e-pedals, she doesn't do any of the gadgets, no gadgets. She doesn't use the cruise control, nothing. No. Oh, something else I've discovered, again, RTFM. I, uh, <laughs> I know. One of the things that has kind of annoyed me a little bit is when, this has got ProPilot. And I've always thought when you're driving along in ProPilot and you're going through perhaps 30, 40 mile an hour zones, and it does recognise the uh, speed limit change on the road sign, but it comes up in the display and you have to press a button for it to Recon for it to do anything about that speed and then slow down or speed up according to that speed in the ProPilot. And I've always thought, wouldn't it be better if it did it automatically? Well, here's the thing. It can. It's in the settings and you have to turn it on. See? RTFM. So I, I've turned that on, so I'm looking forward to trying that. But that, of course, that is going to be quite dependent on the car actually starting. Quite, quite keen on that. So, but I'm quite pleased that I've got here to my destination. Of course, let's be honest, getting to my destination is one thing. The thing that really worries me, getting home again, if I'm being honest. So I'll go and have my meeting now with my customer and we'll see what happens when I get back to the car. Life on the edge. So on, the, on my way back to the car now, the, the uh, meeting is over. And something else that I have done, hang on, I'm going to walk up to the car back. Can you see the car? Can you see the car? So I'm walking up to the car. Can you see it? Can you see it? Walk up to the car. And it should, hang on, is it going to do it? Is it going to, there are. So the lights have come on. Well, they, they did that anyway, but it should, it should unlock itself. Hang on. That, did you hear that? I don't know if you did, but it unlocked itself. Because prior to this, I could only get, I got the car to unlock by putting my fingers like that around the handle. And then when I was going through the settings, I found that actually you can get it to unlock as you walk up to it. And also, uh, it'll lock itself as you walk away, which is the thing I, I think I told you about earlier. So, oh, so it did that. It locks when I went away and it unlocked when I came. It's the little things, frankly. So, okay, I've got in the car. Whew, I'm a bit worried now. Is it going to start? Well, it's showing correctly on the screen there. Push brake and start 
button to drive. So I'm go going to press that. Yeah, it started. Oh, thank goodness for that. I will be having my dinner on time tonight. Right, so now I'm going to go home and uh, see what happens. I wonder what will happen over the next few days between now and when Nissan are going to look at my vehicle. That is a, that is a cliffhanger moment. I'll be back. No, I'm not doing the impression of Arnie. I'll be back in a moment to, to tell you. It'll be a moment. You know what I mean. So it's time for an update. And the problems with the car started on Sunday. Well, really, it was the whole weekend because the biddly biddly bit noise it was making was on Saturday. Just say if I'm getting too technical for you. And the Sunday was when it wouldn't start. And today is Thursday. And I've been out to that meeting on Monday and I used the car again on Tuesday and Wednesday. So it has been in use. My wife used the car this morning to go out and it's been fine, faultless. No biddly biddly bips, nothing is completely normal. And there's been some theories posted on dem socials and forums and things that I kind of contribute to. And somebody suggested to me, oh, because I had a headlight message they said, well, what about, is there any water got into the headlights? Because they apparently had had that with their Tesla and it didn't like it at all. And it had gone really, uh, hadn't started and all sorts of similar symptoms to mine. Now I've had a look at my headlights. There is, as you can see here, like a little kind of ditty, a little dot. And I think that might just be an impurity in, in the plastic because I checked yesterday and it was there and it hasn't moved today. If that was water, it would have moved. So I don't think it's that. The headlights are really thin on the Aria. They look really smart, actually. But I, I don't think it's that. So the other thing, and this has come up in uh, multiple times, is battery, the 12 volt battery. Now I mentioned that briefly earlier. And if you're new to this EV lock, you might be thinking, or even if you have an EV, you might be thinking, why has an EV got a 12 volt battery in it when it's got a blooming great a uh, huge battery to drive along, the, to push the car in a sort of generally forwards direction. And there's a really simple explanation for that. The massive battery, this car has a 63 kilowatt hour usable battery, and that huge battery is 400 volts. And some cars, like the first ever EV I drove, an Ionic 5, has an 800 volt architecture. That's quite high voltage. And if all of these sort of infotainment system and the starting mechanism and the heaters and everything else in the car was run using that four or 800 volt system, that would be a little bit dangerous if something went wrong. I mean, you would, you know, you'd know about it if something went wrong and, and you kind of, it was a short circuit or something happened. If you're running on a 12 volt system, it's less likely to kill you if something goes wrong, frankly. That's the main reason for it. So this EV uses, I think, a lead acid battery, traditional kind of 12 volt battery you find in, in ice cars as well. But I know some other EVs are used, starting to use lithium ion batteries and even some solid states, I think, are on the way. So just using slightly different architecture. And uh, But they're still 12 volt. That's the key thing. You've got 12 volt running those systems in your car. And of course, that battery, if it drains, if it's not running at a good voltage, uh, means that your whole car is in a bit of bother, just as it would happen with an ice car. So uh, as that has come up on more than one uh, occasion now, this week, from people suggesting, oh, you could have a, a battery problem. I did post to somebody, well, why isn't it telling me, oh, there's a battery problem? And it, they, the general consensus is, well, all sorts of weirdness can, can occur should that be the case so i have got a multimeter but i've lost the leads for it i was going to put that across the battery and see what it was but i thought it would be better or it might be just easier because i'm lazy if i got myself a little gadget so i've got this uh which is actually something that will that i can plug into the cigarette lighter oh sorry they don't call it that now is it the 12 volt accessory port or something whatever it is that is going to tell me what the voltage is on my battery and it can be really interesting to see what that is right so here is the 12 volt port on my aria it's in the front here so i'm just going to flip that open and then i'm going to put this little gadget in here and see what happens so let's plug that in uh it's doing nothing so presumably there's no power to that port while the car is off that would make sense so let me turn the car on oh there we go it's come to life now and it says, as you can see, that says 
12.8 volts. Now I believe, oh, hello, 13, 13.1. So that's okay, that's okay. I believe it should be, is it something like 12, above 12.4 volts, I, I think, I think that's right, for it to be okay. And that says 14.3 at the moment. So that that's okay then. Now, of course, what it doesn't tell us, hang on, I'm gonna have a look. I'm gonna check that, check that thing. Uh, a good car battery should read, I'm Goog I Googled it, so I'm not gonna pretend I know. So it says, a good car battery should read 12.4 to 12.9 volts when the car is off. Anything lower doesn't necessarily mean the battery is bad. But anyway, so yeah, so okay, so according to Mr. Google, 12.4 to 12.9 volts, well, it was fine. When I turned it on, it I think it briefly said 11.9 and it shot up to 12 point something and then went to 13, 14. So that's okay then, that looks okay. But of course the car is behaving itself at the moment. So crucially, if it doesn't, between now and when it's going into Nissan, I will be able to check what that says. What does that actually say the voltage is? And I'll have a little to kind of useful little gadget to keep in the glove box. If something weird happens, I can say, ooh, what is the voltage on my battery? So it is a few days later, I'm on my way to the dealer with the car to for them to have a look at the various issues as well as do the recall and I had from them an email a few days ago for me to check in the vehicle ahead of today's uh, visit and interestingly on that email, well, on their job sheet, it only had two of the three things that I've reported to them weirdly it had the glitchy rear view camera it had the fact that the car wouldn't start with the system fault but the lane assist issue not a dicky bird not a sign of it disappeared completely from the job sheet so i phoned them up and they said yeah it's not on there so it looks like what's happened is that they replaced the lane assist uh, fault with the with the system fault for no reason no logical reason at all so they've add that, added that back on there now typically the car has been behaving itself really impeccably since it refused to start which is now what nine days ago even this morning i was on a bypass a few minutes ago a uh, dual carriageway even the lane assist has decided to work this morning so that which is typical and that's going to happen, isn't it? When I'm on taking the car on the way into the dealership to be looked at, of course it's going to behave itself. Of course it's going to work because that's just typical, frankly. But anyway, I have photographs of the error messages on the screen, so at least I can show them that I haven't dreamt it all. So off we go to the dealer. Let's see what they make of it uh, today. They've given me a duke. Yes, this car is definitely as horrible as I was expecting it to be. I'm trying, I'm trying to be, you know, too, not too judgmental about it. The first thing I hate about it is that it is a petrol car. And this is the first time I've driven a petrol car since, uh, since I picked up my Aria on the 30th of December. 2022 and today it's, it's towards the end of November now 2023 when I'm recording this and yeah it's it's fairly horrible to be in a gas guzzling petrol car I sound, don't I sound like a snob I sound I know I sound like a snob and I apologize for that but you know when you've driven an EV you you genuinely it's genuine it's just better it's just the whole experience is just better and this is every every level of just awfulness. I want to drop my Aria off at the Nissan dealer. The person I dropped it off, she was a really nice lady actually, but she pronounced the car Araya. And I did think to myself, is she getting it wrong? Or have, have Nissan now decided that that's how you should say that name of the car? Because, you know, things do change. When I bought the car, all of the sales staff and at the launch event that I went to that was very exciting, everybody called it an Aria. She called it an Araya. So I don't know, are they change? Things do change. I remember as a schoolboy, there was a particular planet that nowadays everybody calls Uranus. But every schoolboy from the age of six knows that you don't say it Uranus, do you? 
<laughs> Why did they change that? Well, we know why they changed that, but I mean, they shouldn't have done, should they? Because it ruined every schoolboy's joke. It's hilarious. Driving a gas car again has, has reminded me about some of the things I really hate about them. And uh, this has got that thing where if you stop for more than, you know, stationary for more than just a couple of seconds, the engine will turn itself off. And then when you go again, then it will, you'll hear it go and starting itself up again. Uh, and I think it's supposed to be better fuel economy, it's supposed to be better for the environment, when everybody knows it's not, because when you put your foot on the gas and the engine starts again, of course it goes and it spits a load of disgusting particulates into the atmosphere and it's horrible. And it's probably more, particularly as you don't tend to stop on a lot of journeys that much. I'm just about to do it again now and the car's gonna turn itself off again. And it's, and I'm sure it causes more pollution by doing that. Yeah, I'm gonna stop now. Well, I've stopped. Yeah, car's turned itself off. Yeah, so I'm going again now. And it, it started, when I put my foot on the gas, it started again. And I, I'm just, I remain unconvinced of what benefit that really is to humankind. This is a bit unexpected because it's 24 hours later and I was supposed to pick up the car yesterday but you'll see I still have the horrible little Duke with me so I'm on my way back to the dealer now and I'll explain why on the way. I know I keep calling this a horrible little car and but one of the things it has got, I've heard about this, but it's the first time I've been in a car that's got this, is the, re the reversing sensors when they peep, they actually peep sort of where you're kind of close to so if you're close on the left it'll peep on the left or the right that's very clever quite like that when I got home yesterday after dropping the car off for its recall and bits and bobs is uh, I don't know this is a complete and utter coincidence really but I take part contribute to an ARIA forum on the interwebs you know like you do and I spent a lot more time on there when I was first going to get the car and then when I first got it but now that I've had it for a while I still dip in and out I try and help other people on there who might have questions who are perhaps new owners and uh, but I may only look at the forum maybe I don't know a couple of times a month you know I don't I'm not on there a lot but I was on there this week because of this whole recall thing and I posted a couple of things so I got home from dropping the car off and I turned the computer on to do some work and my web browser came up uh, where it had previously been the page you had previously been on and it happened to be the aria forum and it just so happened that somebody had posted on that page a a, a, a an entry that was saying that they had heard on the grapevine that nissan have issued an update for the climate alarm issue now if you don't know what that is and you probably don't if you haven't got an aria yourself uh, when the Nissan Aria first came out, lots of people reported that they'd set the remote climate and then it would just set the car alarm off. And indeed, I had that very issue. Now, if you, again, if you don't know what setting remote climate, it is exactly as it sounds. It's a very good thing you can do with an EV that you can't do with an ICE car. You can set the temperature of the car. You can set it on a schedule, for example. So if you uh, commute, you could set the car to warm up or cool down according to the time of year for a certain time every day. So when you get in your car, everyone else is scraping their ICE cars in the winter. You just get in your lovely warm already defrosted EV and off you go um, or you could just do it as a one-off you can hit a button and say oh, I'm gonna leave at this time or I want to do it now so I'd set it if yesterday morning in my car for 7 45 a.m. to say that I want to leave because that's the time I was gonna go off to drop the car in for the recall I came out to the car about 7 50 and I'd set the temperature to be 20 degrees it was actually 12 degrees in the car so I'm you know no the alarm hadn't gone off which is something indeed that can happen and people been experiencing but my temperature wasn't what I'd set it to be so there's definitely issues with that and it's a pain because it's one of the really nice things about having an EV so evidently Nissan have got to the bottom of these issues so I phoned my Nissan dealer and I said oh I've just heard that there's an update for this so she went off uh, and had a look came back to me and said yes you're right and yeah we can do it for you it's a completely separate software update to the recall it's a separate software installation and she said it would take a while we'd like to keep the car for an extra day if that's okay so i said well yeah that's fine she said you can have the courtesy car for another day you can have the horrible little duke for another day 
and uh, and and we'll do the software update. So I thought, oh, okay, thanks very much then. So it's really good, isn't it? These forums have helped me out. Otherwise, I probably would have had to make another special journey to get this software update done because evidently it can't be done over the air. You have to, uh, when you get one of these uh, courtesy cars, they say, oh, please replace the fuel. I don't know whether anybody does, do they? But, you know, I have replaced the fuel. I put the fuel back. I haven't done a huge amount of miles in this car. I probably, by the time I take it back, I didn't check the, the odometer, so I don't really know. But I think I probably will only have done 30 miles, maybe 32. So I won't have done an awful lot. So I went into the petrol station, which I haven't done for nearly a year. My first trip to a smelly old petrol station, which was horrible, I have to say, and stinky, and I really don't like it. And um, I went, I know. And I went in there, I know, I should just shut up, shouldn't I? I should just do one. And I went in there, and it now said, I remember when the minimum delivery at a petrol station was two litres. I don't know, at some point that's changed. It's now five litres. So I had to put five litres of fuel in, which is more than I've used. It's probably getting on for double the amount of fuel that I've actually used. But even then, it was that was still the best part of eight pounds. So, yeah, so I have used probably four pounds worth of fuel. I've actually paid eight because that's the minimum that I could pay. And, you know, I, I'm sort of, uh, yeah, and I would have done 30, 32 miles. How far would I have gone in my EV for that? A very long way is the answer to that question. I went out in the Duke yesterday because only for a short journey, as I've been saying, and as I was driving along, because I do like to know what buttons do, I saw that it's got a flappy paddle gearbox. Now it's an automatic, but it has got the flappy paddle. So I thought, oh, I'll try that. Anyway, this is how stupid I am, okay? I pressed the one on the left, which has got a minus on it, uh, which then went from D, from its automatic status, its drive mode, and then it took, it went into, I wasn't going very quickly, so it went, I don't know, down into kind of third or something. So I pressed it again, and it went into second. And I thought, oh, okay, I need to go up now. So then I pressed, this is the stupid bit, I, at the bottom, I pressed the bottom. I've never used the flappy paddle gearbox before, so I thought it had, um, I thought perhaps it was minus at the top and plus at the bottom, because it's not. There, there's a plus on the other side. It took me a while to work that out, <laughs> at which point I was thinking I may have to drive all the way home in first gear. And then I had to think to myself, I wonder how you turn that off and, uh, and, and put it back into automatic mode. I really shouldn't fiddle, should I? <laughs> now, I've been quite rude about this car, I have to say, but in the short time that I've been driving it, it's grown on me a bit. Only a bit, mind. The thing is, and the main thing I don't like about it, and this would apply to many vehicles, let's be honest, is that it is run with petrol. <laughs> and it's true what they say. Once you've gone to an EV, once you've driven an EV, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to go back. Uh, but as a car, forgetting how it's propelled, it's all right. It's okay. It's, you know, it's perhaps not really my taste, but, you know, each of their own. Right. Let's press stop. Rumble, 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 rumble. So, uh, there we are. Uh, so what do we get on there? 37.5 miles per gallon. I couldn't be less interested. Right, I have to say that I am quite pleased, uh, in all honesty, to see the back of this car. So bye-bye, uh, Mr. Duke. Hmm, I was parked next to an Aria in this kind of sort of gunmetal gray color. And I'm not convinced about it, I have to say, as a color, I think I'd prefer, although it's the, the kind of stock colour, the uh, the one that I've got, the Aurora Green, I really like it. But then I would say that, wouldn't I? Let's go and get Mr. Aria. Uh, I'm so happy I could cry. <laughs> so anyway, everything's sorted. Now, annoyingly, or frustratingly, it's not really annoying, it's just one of those things, they cannot reproduce any of the problems that I had. Lane Assist, they said they took the car out, can't reproduce the problem, but it worked on the way up here, so... You know, I'm not that surprised. The camera glitch, again, can't reproduce. And the system fault that I had, again, can't reproduce it. They said, interestingly, that the battery, the 12 volt battery is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. They could find this and there's a good charge in it. So I just don't know what happened. But they've done this two software updates. One 
for the recall and one for the climate control. So maybe there's some other bug fixes in there that are going to help me. I mean, who knows? I, just, I have no idea. I've just got to monitor it. It's coming in for a service in a month. So if there's anything else, if, it, if these things happen again, I will just have to mention it. Um, at least they know about it and at least it's under warranty. So what else can you say? I mean, I'm being a, a developer, you know, I'm a coder. I understand that if you cannot reproduce a problem, it's really difficult to fix it. And if the computer is telling them there was no faults when they when they check the logs, nothing. So I mean, you know, what can they do? They, they can't do anything, can they, in that case? They did actually check, to be fair, they sent me a video I've never had that before. I've never had a video before. I know it's something that's quite common these days. I've never had a video from a dealer when a car's gone in before. So it was interesting to see that they'd gone around, they'd actually checked the connections to the rear camera. The technician had done that. So um, so that's, you know, positive. At least they haven't just said, I can't find a fault. That's the end of that. They've actually checked, you know, that all the connections and everything are okay. And they, they you know, they've gone, gone the extra mile to, to, to have a look into it as far as they could. So that's the best that I can hope for, really. Anyway, time for me now to drive home. The drive home is going to be much nicer than the drive up here. So the jury is very much out uh, when it comes to this, this issue that I've got. So I'm, I'm just going to have to kind of see what happens over the coming weeks and months. I will, of course, keep the channel fully updated with what is going on. Uh, and if things change, I'll let you know. When I was driving the Duke, and I talked about the fact that it had the thing that turned the, the engine off and then restarts when you put your foot on the gas. That don't, doesn't work if, you, if your battery, if your 12 volt battery is not really uh, very, you know, keeping a decent charge. And that happens very quickly if you do short journeys. I found that a lot on my Honda Civic. And sure enough, the Duke, on the way up to pick up the, the, my car today, uh, it wasn't working. So this thing that's there that's supposed to reduce your emissions, like I said, not convinced. And when I picked up the car uh, and I pulled out from the Nissan dealer, I was just silence. And yeah, okay, I'm used to that being a regular EV driver now, but I don't know, it's just something about it. After being, you just realized how noisy the petrol Duke was and just getting in this car, you just pulled away. No sound at all, it's lovely. <laughs> it's just so good. Anyway, uh, I think we can't really go any further with this video, can we? Because Nissan cannot find those faults, they cannot reproduce them, which means that they can't fix them. However, I've had two major software updates to the car, so I've just got to wait and see, really, whether that makes any difference. And I will, of course, keep the channel fully updated with what happens uh, over the coming weeks and months with these particular issues. But I still love my car, I still love my Aria, I still love my EV, that hasn't changed. And, uh, yeah. I just kind of keep going from here and I hope you will keep watching as I post more uh, EV and ARIA videos. And of course, don't forget, there's uh, more uh, electric stuff coming up to do with uh, heat pumps and the move away from fossil fuels in my house as well. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Hit like if you've enjoyed this video and I will see you for another one really soon.